Ale comment ça va? And then I can't remember, but I can switch to Italian. Buongiorno. Come stai? Bene, grazie. E tu? Or in English, because my podcast is in English. Yo, 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 tribe. Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, I'm 29 from the United Kingdom. This channel is all about my maker creator life. I am going to be showing you some sewing, some crochet, yarn hauls and all of my craziness. So, it's been a while since I've posted and although I've got footage that I've already pre-recorded I thought I would jump on here in real time so that I could give you a bit of an update. Then once this has gone live some of the pre-recorded stuff that I've already done will then come out. But I just felt I needed to jump on here and give you an all an update and say hi, hello and welcome to my channel. I forgot to do that bit. Let's do it now. If you are a returning viewer, hey tribe, welcome back. And if you're brand new, hi, hello, and welcome. So today, I've got so much to show you. I feel a little bit unnerved with this whole, I'm talking to myself, I'm used to that, but I'm recording myself, and it's going on the channel. So, as you can see, first update, it looks a little different behind me. I have decorated and I've got a new sofa and I am so so happy so so pleased with it and thought I would record from here now the light is casting a halo and it's a bit annoying because I'm not central to it there we go does that, does that is that better I think that's better oh. okay so it looks so pretty, it's so calm in here, I'm so pleased with it. That radiator was bugging me for so long, I finally repainted it and it's fresh white. Um, I used to record before and each time I thought, oh, I don't want my horrible yellow radiator on show. It wasn't that yellow, but now it's fresh pearly white, like ting ting. Um, and what else is brand new? so many things. I think the last video went out was Pinnacle um, and that was maybe February or March and we are now well into May, almost into June. It's May 27th today, bank holiday Monday. Um, yeah, grey hair now. What do we think? What do we think? And of course in the time that I haven't been on the channel I have been making all of the things. Uh, I'm talking sewing, mm -hmm, machine knitting, knitting and of course my love crochet. I've got a few things scattered here just out of shot that I want to show you um, from a few adventures that I've been on in the past month or two. I have been on so many amazing adventures. If you're on my Patreon you will be receiving weekly updates and you will you will already have seen photos of all of this. Um, so my Patreons already know that I visited the Fibre Lounge in Hertfordshire. My Patreons know that I went on a little bit of a mass haul in London and I visited Loop and I visited a few others and I have got so many goodies here. Also, if you're my Patreon, You'll know about a jumper called Risen, which is my latest granny square make. And you might know about, you do know about, a denim dress I've been making and a floral wrap skirt, which I've just finished photographing. Okay, I think 
there's no real set out for this and all I'm going to do is grab all the things show you and I'm going to start with my trip to London. Now these are not in chronological order of what I've done in the last couple of months but there's a lot to show you from this trip so I couldn't go to, a bit of background story for you, I couldn't go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year because I'm just going to, should I tell you this story first or should I tell you in a different order so I can knit my socks or should I just knit my socks and tell you about them all after. I'm just going to carry on knitting so I don't play with my hair because it annoys me, let alone you. Okay, so, oh damn, as I was saying, I went to, I couldn't go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year um, because I had other things going on financially and um, my friend that I met there last year, Nicole, she also couldn't go because of fina um, finances. We had other things going on, moving houses and things like that. So we both said that we weren't going to go, which I was disappointed to say the least. But Edinburgh Yarn Festival needs a huge amount of spending money. And also, it's not really a, a day trip. It's a overnight at the very minimum. Please excuse that I'm not making eye contact while I just sort my yarn bath out. So... Because we couldn't go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I suggested that I go down to London and visit her, because that's where she lives and works, and we go on a bit of an adventure, visiting all of the, well, a lot of the yarn and fabric shops down there. So, that's what we did. Um, I got the coach down there because it was cheaper um, my return was, I don't know, something like 30 quid um, which meant that because it's the coach and it takes longer I had to get the 5 past 6 coach to get into London for like something past 8, something to 9 to then get the tube where we were meeting so it was a really early morning um, my darling father took me to the coach station. Thank you so much, Dad. I love you. Um, and he also picked me up from the coach station when I got back home at pff, something something to midnight. I don't know, it was a late one. Um, okay, I've almost sorted the yarn bath out. So, when I got to London, I took the tube to Angel and we went to a little cafe there, I can't remember what it was called, but it was really cute, it was like an independent one, and I had a smoothie, Nicole had breakfast, and then we went to Ray Stitch. Now, I have an overlocker and a sewing machine, and on my Make 9 this year, I've put a few sewing items, and I really want to get into sewing my clothes, I want to have a me made wardrobe. Um, Nicole is goals because she knits and she sews and the majority, I'd say at least two thirds of her wardrobe is handmade and that's where I want to be. Um, and she has a very specific style so everything in her wardrobe works together. Um, and a little side note, I was saying to her while I was down there, I would love to have a very specific style like hers. Um, so that everything goes together but you know what that's just not me and as she said just embrace it so as you'll see from my fabric choices I'm about to show you my style is a little bit out there um so we went to Ray Stitch and I got a huge kilt pin which I don't actually have down here with me um, but it looks like a ginormous safety pin I'm doing that because that's where I put it on my jacket upstairs um, and I want to put stitch markers on there. Um, I'm going to put some jump rings on it and then put all my stitch markers on and then I can hang that up somewhere in my HDDC headquarters um, so that my stitch markers are always easily accessible. The reason I haven't done that is because I've had a big re-tidy, reshuffle when decorating and I don't know where I put them. I'm sure they'll turn up though. 
Um, so, I got a big kilt pin, and then also from Ray Stitch, I got a new dress pattern. Now, I had already done some research, I've watched a lot of the Grain Line videos, and whilst watching them, I um, had made a list in my notes. I mean, I've watched, since last year, I've watched the good, a good bulk of what they've put out there. And, and whilst watching those and a few other podcasts, I had made a sort of note within my phone, the note app on my phone, of patterns that I wanted to make. Um, and so I had a pretty good idea of the sort of things that I was looking for. Um, and when I went in there, they had like just this entire sort of cubby full of patterns and books. Um, and there was quite a few that I could have got, but there was just this one that I knew straight away was for me. And that is this. It's the Nico Top and Dress by True Bias. I have seen this on a few podcasts and I have wanted it for so long. Um, it's just a jersey, like full length maxi dress, but you can also make it into a top. And you can also add sleeves on if you wanted to. Um, I don't know that I will add sleeves. Not to the version I'm planning on making, but I do envisage for my winter wardrobe making this in like either an all over plaid slash tartan design um, or just like a thick black jersey and that will have sleeves. So I picked this up for £18 from Ray Stitch. Um, it calls for medium weight knit fabric with 75% stretch such as rib knit, sweater knit, bamboo knit or stretch velvet. Stretch velvet. Oh, I have to make one of these in velvet. Though I do feel like it'll be a little bit... Got to be careful it doesn't like a Halloween costume. So, it looks amazing and I love the diversity with the model. So I picked that up and then after the, I did get the fabric for it but I'm going to try and tell you how, what we did in order so I don't miss anything out. And I got the kilt pin and then after that we went across the road to sew over it and they've got some lovely stuff in there and I had a really good look round um, and there was a class going on in there and it just looked like such a lovely place to hang out. And it kind of made me a bit sad that I'm not a local. <laughs> um, and I rummaged through their remnants bin as well. And then after that, we got back on the tube and we went, no, sorry, then we walked to Loop. I went to Loop London. Now that's where my socks come in. So when I went into Loop, which is the most darling, amazing shop, and hopefully I'm putting pictures up for you right now, um, the, it's, it's really quaint and it's really small but it was absolutely jam-packed with amazing yarn um, and the cubbies on the wall were that high up that they had like um, it needed like one of those wooden ladders on a, on a rail to go along like Bell's Library and it would just finish it off um, so in there I bought sock yarn and it's the sock yarn that I am knitting on right now um, I had pre-decided when I was going to London that I was going to buy things in colours that just call to me. Um, since picking my one word this year, simplify, I have really reduced the amount of clothes that I have and I've minimised the amount of colours that I wear. Um, and for me, the only print that, I'm, that I will wear is floral print or um, tartan. They're the only prints that I'm really drawn to. And if you was to see my rail, which I might take some footage of when I tidy it up, um, the only prints are like floral prints for dresses and I've got a floral shirt. And then all the rest, there is a lot of black. I wear a lot, a lot, a lot of black, I'd say two thirds of my outfits are head to toe black and the rest of them have something black in them. And then um, there are pops of colour in my wardrobe, like my day to day staples. So 
Again, for work, I wear majority black, but I will also wear navy. Pink is creeping in quite a bit. Um, I've got quite a bit of grey, quite a bit of khaki, and then blue, but nothing too out there. There's burgundy as well. There isn't anything like mustardy or there's none of that going on. Although like I've got one mustard um, long sleeve top, but that's it. And I didn't even buy that, it was given to me. So, so although my style isn't as like honed in and as niche as say my friend Nicole, I do have a general idea of what works for me, what suits me, what my style is and what colors I'm drawn to. And I definitely like a more neutral palette with pops of colour. I love my floral print. And I would say my my overall style is sort of, it's not even sort of, it is grunge. So we're talking black, we're talking ripped jeans. We're talking fishnets. We're talking dark eye makeup. Um, we think like 1980s slash 1990s grunge. And then um, there's a girly element to it, so I really like my floral print, I really like my glitter, I really like my pops of pink. Um, so I'm just working with that really at the moment. Um, I also am enjoying denim at the moment, but that's another side note. Um, so yeah, I went into Loop and I wanted sock yarn and usually... After Edinburgh Yarn Festival, when I bought a lot of pinks, which I haven't really used, I knew I needed to get some more neutral colours because that's what I wear, so my blacks, my greys. And so I picked up some of this, which basically looks like my hair right now. <laughs> Do you not think? It's black and white and it's the Baker's Tweed yarn. Um, now, the band... I've took the bands off and I can't remember what they are without looking at my phone so I'll put it on the screen but it's got the um, yarn uh, thread within it to reinforce them which I really like about that about this yarn um, and then I also got pink and I know I said I wasn't going to get pink but this is a solid pink and I decided that I'm just going to stripe it through on these socks just at the top like that and the rest is going to be the black and white so grey almost um so I bought one ball of this which was 500 grams I'm lying to you 50 grams and I bought 50 grams of the pink as well um I do really like that pink I like how it's just a solid pink as well it's really nice yarn to work with so far and I've frogged I think Whenever I cast a pair of socks on, I always cast them on three times, and I did with this pair as well. Um, I'll tell you the casting on story a little bit later on, because that was on another adventure, um, and the stitch marker that's on here. I do really like the sock yarn. It's not, it's not as soft as what indie dyed yarn is, but I really like the colours, and I like the way it's knitting up. Um, so I'm going to carry on knitting on with them, so I don't fiddle with my hair. Just hope you think I'm not ignoring you, I, I am looking. Um, who's get told off not making eye contact? So now I'm really um, not aware of it, I'm really aware of it. So I got sock yarn from Loop. Um, there was so many yarns in there, like different colours, speckles and bright ones and there was glitter ones and then I just, I'm very aware that I am a product maker as opposed to the process so process makers they really really enjoy the process of making they really enjoy um, every detail so they will in you know for example Nicole's a process maker and she will happily hand tack things because she enjoys doing it whereas I'm a product maker I make for the product and so that tends to mean that I don't so much have the attention to detail um, and that I enjoy the finished product more than I do actually making it and because I enjoy the finished product more I tend to buy the brighter yarns to try and keep myself occupied but then I never wear them because they don't quite go with, with my vibe um, 
So that's a little bit of a, I don't know if anybody else has that inner dilemma where you want the pretty yarn because you really enjoy making it, but you need to make the more boring colours because you'll actually wear it. Um, so I picked up those two lots of sock yarn. Um, I could have got more, but I knew that we were going on to more shops and so I didn't want to blow my whole budget straight away. Whereas if I was just visiting that shop and nowhere else, I probably would have, not even probably, I would have got um, a skein of indie dyed sock yarn to add to my stash and I would have got a sweater's quantity of yarn. So it's probably a good job that I moved on because I don't need more yarn at the moment. I don't, I really don't. I need to get a badge that says I do not need more yarn. Like a pledge. Um, so then we went on to um, mm, 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 Tribe. I went to Tribe in Richmond and it's an amazing cute shop. Cute's the wrong word. Cute doesn't fit it. It's just an amazing shop. It's got its own vibe. It's full of amazing yarn. I walked in and there was yarn being wound on the Swift. There was also be yarn being wound at um, Loop, but I just really remember it when I walked into Tribe. Um, and did I mention Tribe? Uh, Loop's got an upstairs. There was an upstairs as well, so I spent ages looking downstairs and then Nicole was like, there's an upstairs too. And I, my mind was just, there was so much to take in, in such a small space. But anyway, so we went on to Tribe and um, had the most amazing yarns hung up. But as soon as I went in there, I saw the crochet hook set and knitting needle sets hung up. And I already knew what I wanted to purchase. Um, I have wanted a crochet hook set for well over two years. I remember going to um, a hobby craft event in Milton Keynes. And Mickey from Set Free My Gypsy Soul had a crochet hook set padded hooks they were amazing and they were way 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 out of my budget and so I bought a five pound imitation set with no case from Amazon and then I walked into Tribe and I just knew that it was my time to indulge and so I got this oh this is my tulip set of hooks it comes in this hard pink case, which, oh, do you know, I spent ages in there agonising, honestly, and I had to message, I messaged a few people and I messaged Lisa from Raspberry Crochet as well, uh, and, was, and just, I was like, help me, um, because there was a grey set as well, and sensible me in my head was saying, get the grey set, and then you can buy more yarn. But this is the set that I always wanted and this is the set that I first saw. And the grey had gold hooks. Uh, the hook was gold on the grey set but I just was a bit worried that it might wear off and also that it had a soft case whereas this is the hard case. And it's pink and I just love pink at the moment. And I could see it here on this sofa looking all good. So in my hook set I've got all these hooks. They go from a 2mm up to a 6mm. The only one that is weird is this one, number 3. It's a 2.20. 2.25. Yeah, but 2.2? I don't understand the need for it. But anyway, it's there. Um, and they go all the way up to a 6 They include the half sizes. So that's really cool. And then in here, you get two darning needles and a pair of snips with the little matching sheath I think that's called to cover it up stamped with tulip um, and these cute gold scissors they're so cute oh I just love it and then I had a pink measuring tape that my mum bought me recently so I've added that in there as well just cause it's pink um, and then what I'm going to do is put a stitch marker on the zip, but I need to find my stitch markers. 
then it zips up and it's got this tassel on it and I just love it it's like my most favorite clutch ever and it goes everywhere now and I know no matter what that I've got scissors I've got darning needles um, and I've got hooks and that's just oh I just love it it's my biggest indulgent in crochet because it was 70 pound which is quite a lot but when I brought my imitation pink set, I think I bought that in 2016, so three years ago now, I have used it for every project since, other than I've got a padded 3.5, which is blue rather than pink. Um, and so I know padded hooks are the way forward for me. I know I'm gonna get so much use out of it that I didn't even need to try and justify it to myself. I wanted it and I've got it and it's amazing and they crochet really smoothly they just glide um, so yeah I'm having so much I just love opening my little clutch case and getting so much joy from that um, so then after that we went and got some food I think um, Nicole needed the break because I was just like I don't know which one to get I don't know which one to get for a good half hour to 40 minutes even though I knew which one I was going to get um, and she picked up some really cool yarn from there and a new hook as well and then we went to Leon and we had I think we both had the vegan burger which was amazing it was really nice um, and then I did nip into a charity shop but my head was just spinning with yarn so we came back out of there and then we hit this street in London I don't know which street it was and it had six or seven fabric shops like three on one side four on the other or four that side three that side and we spent a good couple of hours in and out of these shops picking fabric so much fabric um, I already knew that I wanted fabric for the Nico, the Nico, Nico dress and I wanted um, just to see what else was available and get a few bits and bobs because I bought the tulip set that heavily dented my fabric budget to the point where maybe I shouldn't have bought fabric but you're not going all that way and seeing all that fabric and coming away empty handed so I will show you what I've got for the Nico dress which is this pink jersey it's rose blush um let me open it up to show you that's gonna look amazing in that i actually have like a pink um bodycon dress upstairs which i think was from primark so i know that it will be very happily received in my wardrobe and this will be a longer length than what the current one I have and then once the Primark one's completely unusable I will have a me made in its place um I think I got did I get three and a half or four meters and it cost me about 20 pound so that's there ready and waiting to be used it feels really soft doesn't actually smell but it's going to need washing um, and this is going to be a project that I'm going to make on my overlocker and I haven't made anything on my overlocker since I got it so I'm looking forward to just jumping in on that um, I do need to get some cotton well some thread to go with it so that's the pink can you see pink coming through um, then I went into another shop and I just had we it was oh, I'm putting the pictures up for you to see there was just fabric everywhere and we were wading through it rummaging through it and um, Nicole had project ideas in her mind I had project ideas in my mind but for me when I just saw the amount of fabric my mind just went blank and I was just there was so much like so much so that I think in a couple of months time I'd like to go back and do it again because now I've got a better understanding of how much fabrics there I 
know in my head what I'm likely to pick up now and what would be useful and what I want to make as well. Um, and we went downstairs into one and it was just like the basement bit and the lady said to me, whatever you want down here, let me know and I'll make a deal with you. Um, so the fabric down there should be like eight pound a roll, a roll, I wish, eight pound a metre and I pointed to one and um, I think she said eight pound and I was like, no, this is the basement, yard. this is the basement fabric, we're doing a deal. So. I haggled and I got it for £5 a metre. She was probably just glad to see it go because no one else is going to probably ever buy it. But um, I saw a pair of trousers on Pinterest ages ago that I wanted. And then when I'd gone on a mini adventure elsewhere to a vegan market, I'd seen them in a local shop. But they were like £40. And then I saw the fabric and I bought, again, I don't remember, two or three metres. That's £15 if that. And bought this fabric to make the trousers. Whoa! It's hella bright. So I got this yellow tartan plaid fabric to make the trousers that hopefully are on the screen for you now, which I want to wear with black t-shirt and Doc Martens or my all black vans like they'll easily I've got that much black in my wardrobe they'll easily fit in and then if there's enough fabric left I might make um, some sort of top or I don't know something we'll see how much is left because I need to match the checks up and all of that business um, so yeah and I don't actually have a pattern for those yet um, I need to find a pattern or I need to make one up which as my first pair of trousers I'd rather find a pattern but I'm not opposed to making it up I just know that I'll be making a lot more hard work for myself um, so I will have to do a little bit of digging around to see if I can find a pattern that I can hack or matches the pattern that of the trousers of that picture I've just shown you um, but yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to doing those actually um, I wonder if I get away wearing them to work probably not <laughs> uh, and then I also picked up a meter and a half of this fabric now that's just the bit that's left over it's amazing floral print I love my florals Originally, I was going to make a pair of um, pyjamas, and it's kind of like a stretch cotton. Um, I was going to make a pair of pyjamas, but then today I decided I wanted to make a skirt out of it. I went shopping in Birmingham on Saturday, and I was trying on wrap skirts, ones that tie, that actually wrap over and tie, but because I'm so tiny, they just weren't fitting. Um, so I decided I was going to make one and that I was going to use this fabric. Now if I was to go back to London I would pick up quite a few different floral ones um, to make different skirts and some more pyjamas so because I just I love that it's so granny I just love it um, and so I made a skirt which I'm going to put the footage in to show you it took me all day I didn't have a pattern I made it up so I tried those few on and knew kind of what I wanted to do um, and I'd seen an image on Pinterest as well of what of the shape that I wanted um, I'm very visual so as long as I could refer back to a shape I could kind of in my head work out what I needed to do and then I found a YouTube tutorial as well um, and kind of hacked that so I made, I cut out the first skirt and what I failed to do is because I wanted it to wrap and then have a split I didn't give enough fabric to angle so the split was too wide and you could see too much at the top of my thigh it really didn't meet so I kind of abandoned that but also when I'd been sewing the hem I'd stretched it too much and it um, it was all wavy and it just, yeah, I learned a few things doing that. 
um, and so I, with the rest of the material, made another one. Um, and I, I do really, really like it. The only thing that wasn't so great is I originally made it so it was going to be a wrap and there wasn't going to be a split. But in my head, I knew I wanted there to be a split. Um, and I tried it on when I'd finished and I, I was disappointed that you couldn't see enough thigh, even though I'd made it so you wouldn't. I kind of thought, in my head, I kind of thought I might be able to arrange it so that I can have my leg out, but then also cover it up. And it didn't work, so I took a pair of scissors to it. Only again, I didn't, I didn't allow for the curve, and I cut too much. So I then, of the panel that I just lobbed, like lopped off, I reduced it down and then stuck it back on because it had the sash tie on it already. So there's an extra seam in my skirt that needs to be there, um, which has annoyed me. But you know what? I made it myself, it doesn't have to be perfect. I was getting really frustrated with myself and I was thinking, well, you know, other people be able to sew this much neater than me. And then I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna enjoy the process. I'm gonna enjoy the fact that I'm in my HD, HDDC HQ. I'm sat at my desk, I'm sewing. I've got a nice film on, I had to step up on. I've got music playing. I'm just gonna enjoy my time sewing so I carried on making it um, and yeah there's a couple of other things like where I made a hole for the, the tie to come through so I can tie it and then my buttonhole setting on my um, sewing machine wouldn't work so I couldn't finish the edges off quite as neat as I'd want to um, but you know what it looks really good I've took photos of me wearing it and it's part of my wardrobe now, so I don't care if it took a long time because I've enjoyed spending my day sewing um, and it isn't 100% neat, but now that I've worked with that slightly stretchy fabric, I feel more confident working on this. Um, I think if I'd have gone straight in on this, I would have probably wrecked my fabric, so that is good. Um, so yeah, I've already used this fabric which I bought I brought this, I think maybe two weeks ago now, was it two or three weeks ago? It wasn't, I think it was like the 8th of May that I went down there, so it wasn't that long ago. Um, and I've already used that up and then this bit's going to go in my stash for another project at some point. And then in that same shop we got some of this this was Nicole's idea it's like a toweling fabric and again it was in the basement um, and that's to make some makeup pad removers I've got crochet ones but they're more of an exfoliator um, I just want something that I can just take makeup off before I jump into bed um, so I'm going to do those she did tell me what I should do and I'm just going to find some YouTube tutorials <coughs> excuse me and go and do that so that was all of my fabric that I brought um, and then I bought this amazing thing and sock yarn so I feel like I didn't come away with as much as I thought I was going to I definitely intended to buy more fabric but this little number was so worth it and then um, was it maybe two weekends later? I went to the Fibre Lounge in, it's like Hertfordshire, and I met Lisa from Raspberry Crochet. Yes, so I drove down there and she got the train up and it was a really good day. So we met and we went in a little cafe and we were sat, both sat crocheting and all the locals are kind of looking a bit like, what are they doing? Which made me a little bit sad because they've got such an amazing yarn shop so I think everyone around there needs to learn how to crochet or knit and go and support that shop but anyway um and we were both wearing handmade so I had on pinnacle which I've got here it's my jumper design that I made using Rito yarn you can really see the pleats now it's hung up like that on my store bra hanger 
maybe I should crochet some. Um, so I was wearing that with a pinafore dress that I got from a charity shop when I was in London with Nicole. Uh, I think it cost me £6. I love my denim from charity shops. Love it, love it, love it. They are. I've got a denim jumper, a jacket, two denim pinafores. I think that's it so far. And they are really good staples in my um, wardrobe now. Right. Got a tickly cough and I'm just debating whether to go make a warm drink and also that this is at 40 minutes. So you lot have got, you've not seen me in months and now you're gonna have hours of me. So I was wearing Pinnacle and Lisa was wearing um, a crochet cotton jumper that she'd made which was really really nice um, and then so we sat and we had a chat and we had a drink and we was just making and then I was like oh okay I'm really excited let's go to the yarn shop so we went to the yarn shop and I got pictures of me sat outside on the little window seat looking all cute and geeky um, and we walked in and there was all this amazing yarn again I was like oh I don't know what to buy and I, I didn't really go there with any specific purchases in mind um, because I have so much yarn and so many projects that I want to make anyway but I knew that I was probably going to end up with sock yarn but I was really tempted by the chunkies um, and if I had a project in mind I would have got some but I didn't want to get just one skein of chunky yarn and nothing to use it on so I got sock yarn um, I had a really good time in there, Louisa was lovely, we had a good chat um, this is like again click, she knew what she was buying, she'd found pattern on Ravelry and then me true to form was like oh 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 but this oh 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 ran and ran and ran around the shop and then pretty much like the first thing I saw when I walked in there I, I got so first purchase was this my can you see it is it blowing out I hope it's not blowing out let's take it off is my Dirty Hallows yarn pin oh, don't know if I can get that off It's green, it's the Deathly Hallows, and then it's got yarn inside it. Um, and then, I don't actually know who that's by, but I will check the picture and let you know, because then it'll have the maker's tag on it. Um, let's put that back in the same hole. So I got that, I was adamant that I needed that. And that's living on my... Harry Potter bag by Josie Rose and it's the Marauder's Map fabric which I absolutely adore I've got my 10 points to Gryffindor which I got in Edinburgh when I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival I went to the Harry Potter shop that was sent by one of my lovely subscribers um, and then I also got two more so I've got these two from Fibre Lounge so that one's doing that with yarn around it and then that's her Fiber Lounge bag, which are badge, which are with um, EYF and Yarndale, and then on here I've got a brooch. I've got my pant person from a crowd funder I supported, and that one, Manchester United is not my team, but it was in my jewelry box. I think I got it when I went on a school trip. So it's going to stay on there until I can get a Leicester one, and then that will go to a charity shop. So yeah. My badge collection growing um, and then also when I was in there I got my stitch marker which is this little postage stamp so so cute um, so that I could recast these socks on which I had already cast on twice um, no so I'd already cast on once and ripped down cast one again when I was in the shop and then 
I think the next day I, I ripped them down, they were about here, I ripped them down and cast them on again. And so we wandered around the shop, we purchased what we were purchasing and we went and had lunch at a pub and I managed to charge my phone there so I could get myself back home with the sat nav and then we were going to go back in the cafe to sit and crochet and then we decided why not go sit at the fibre lounge as we've gone all the way there anyway and so we went back in there and we sat and had a good old natter and um, I worked on my socks and Lisa worked on a shawl which I think she'd frogged previously as well so she was casting on like 200 and something stitches um, yeah we had a really good time and then we left and so I drove home the motorway was a little bit of a nightmare not gonna lie and then um, the next day the Sunday having already been to London and gone on a mass haul and then to the fiber lounge um, on the Sunday I then had one more yarn stop to make so um, another thing that I've done which I again I haven't told you all this in order so another thing that I did in the last couple of months is I went on a knitting course a knitting machine course now on my 30 before 30 one of my um, to-do list items one of the things I'd put on there was to do a crochet course or a knitting course or something yarn related or a retreat and my grandmother gifted me her knitting machine and I knew once I've got my um, headquarters set up properly which I've now done with all the decorating finished I wanted to go on a knitting machine course I could use my knitting machine um, and I looked into a few and I was going to do one with Nottingham Uni and then I've been following Amber Hards on um, Instagram and I just love all of her stuff and realised that she did courses so I booked myself on and I went and spent two days in Bristol which is a lovely place by the way they've got some amazing big green spaces um, and it's so hilly around there so I spent two amazing days in Amber's studio knitting samples which are here in my HP tote Gryffindor for the win okay let's it's also got my yarn winder in it I hope they've not snagged anything okay let's take these out right so I made so many different samples um, that one's got lycra in it and fishing wire she gives it an amazing pattern. These were using the punch cards to make patterns. Um, then I did, oh this one's amazing. It's got a bit of mohair in it there. She's so fluffy. And then it's got glitter and it's got fishing wire, which gives it like the mesh. I love that and make such an amazing design and uh, pink of course and then there's another one here these were the textured stitches oh my goodness Gryffindor colours standard I'd guess this is more Slytherin colours um, I just wasn't feeling this one when I was making it it's probably just the colours didn't quite go then these are all my lacy ones. Really like that. It's really effective, and I really like the grey and the pink together. Um, oh, this one is amazing. I'm gonna make this into a wall hanging. So I used um, Amber's yarns that she provided, but then I had my own yarn with me, this pink, and so I put that in there. And look at that. I absolutely love that. That was a weaving technique and I didn't think I would like it because it's a little bit time intensive but I really enjoyed it and it's more I would do more of the same. Um, and then this is the 
first one I ever made. So that was my first cast on, just plain simple, and then started changing the stitch size, and then I added in another colour and I was striping and I was like, whoa, check me out. Um, and then there was this one, I've got all my nip and tucks and pleats and eyelet fish net hole things. Um, and then another one here, I was learning how to do my eyelets and my ladders and my tucks. Um, and more stripes, this is one of the early ones. Oh, it's got a hole in it, I need to sew that. And then this one was like a free form weaving and I added on different yarns, lace, loops and all sorts of goodness. Oh, this orange and so the orange is lycra and then the grey was like a standard yarn. It's really nice, really soft and I love that effect. Look at that in there. Such a cool fabric. And then it's got fish and wire in there as well, which makes an amazing mesh. Um, more ladders. More ladders, lace. I love that because it's quite grungy, like the rock chicky look that I like. Um, I've got, I was cabling on this one. And my last one, seriously fluffy mohair and my fishing wire. I love that mesh. So I was doing, oh no, one more. More eyelets and lace, ladders. Um, yeah, so I, I was doing those and I absolutely loved it. And I thought to myself, I've got to get some machine yarn now. And then that's me done spending. Um, and Amber really helpfully gave me links to some websites um, but it's not expensive but I, I just wanted some yarn that was relatively inexpensive um, just to play around with. I'm not sure how much I will machine knit but then when I look at samples like this and when I look at this I know that I really do want to make quite a few things. Um, so I just wanted some inexpensive yarn so I went on Facebook marketplace and I found a lady about 40 minutes away from me having a huge D stash I've got a picture to put in um, and she left me for about 30 minutes and I sat there going I love this oh no no not that how about this um, and I had set myself a budget that I was just going to spend like £20 um, and just get a couple of things to play with and I came away with my, like a box and a huge bag, like a bin liner full. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh dear, budget blown but it was all really cheap and uh, it was a steal. So whilst I was in Weymouth earlier on in the um, month, I found this in a charity shop for a pound. I have no idea what it's made of. It's like a Chanel type. But that whole thing cost me a pound. I don't know how much it weighs, but I couldn't leave that. So I got that. Um, so I'd definitely be using that. And then I just brought down two yarns to show you from the knitting machine um, haul. I've got a whole picture, but I figured not many of you would be interested. And if you are, then I'll do a separate vlog. Um, so this, I had to show you this. This is the glitter. One of the glitters. One of three glitters that I got. And it's like mermaid. And I'm tempted to put some in my hair actually. I might do that, just twist it around my hair. But um, I love that and I want to do something like fish yarn, fish in net and then somehow put some glitter in there. I don't know what I would make. Um, 
I think the first thing I need to try and make is a jumper. Well, I've got loads of this, so it's fine. And then another one I've brought down to show you is this khaki green, which is another colour that I'm loving at the moment. Um, this one's a lot rougher. Um, and they've got like, a load of them have got stickers inside them. Oh, excuse me. Um, which are really good because it gives information because they're on the cone. Um, and this one says olive drab. And then... DK. So that's double knit weight. But I don't know how much that weighs. But I'm going to guess like at least 500 grams. Probably more than that. Because of the size of it. And that cost me £4. So you can see why I went crazy. So yeah, I've got some amazing, amazing yarns to play with. Um, and a knitting machine. Just waiting for me to be unleashed on. Um, it does need like a little bit of a some TLC it's been sat on use for about 20 or so years so it's a little bit stiff so I, I need to watch some YouTube videos and work out how to take care of it or find someone to help me um, I kind of should have took it down to me with Amber and maybe we could have had a go but I just didn't think so but yeah once I've got that up and running then I can my first thing I'm going to make is a jumper um, and I'm probably, I can, I, I've got two ways I can finish it off. I can either just make a really simple one and crochet it together, or I can overlock it because I've got my overlocker. And I forgot to show you the yarn that I got from Fibre Lounge, which is this. It's Socks Yeah by Coop Knits, and it's grey. Um... It's 75% fine, super wash, merino wool, 25% 20, nylon, and they recommend a 2.25mm needle, and there's 50 grams here. And it's machine washable, and the colour's 121 melanite. Um, and that's going to be another pair of socks. So, yeah. Tribe have had so much fun. I've been up to so many different things. Um, I haven't vlogged a lot of it, any of it. I just kind of wanted to go enjoy being the moment. Um, but I really have missed checking in with you all and I've missed being here. Now things are a bit calmer and everything's in place. Um, so all my decorating's done. I've got my nice sofa. I just thought it was now the right time to pop in and say hi to you all, let you know what's been going on. Um, and then I've got some pre-recorded footage that I'd already taken that I wanted to put up, but I wanted you to see my face first so that I could just give you an update of where I'm at and what's been going on. So there will be another vlog going out at some point, um, or maybe two, because I took quite a lot of fo footage. I recorded myself as I was making my latest uh, Granny Square project. Um, so it was quite a, it wasn't a lengthy process, but I got quite a bit of footage because at every stage I made sure that I turned my camera on and showed you what was going on. So I'm going to show you that quickly now. I love it. So this is called Risen and I made it to wear on Easter Sunday but we had that freak heat wave and so I didn't end up wearing it. Um, I have used, I'm sat on yarn, <laughs> I have used Double Knit. The pink is Stylecraft uh, Wild Rose and the cream is I can't remember offhand but I've got it somewhere and I'll let you know and then the centers are all scrap yarn double knit um, or small balls that I needed to use up now it isn't quite finished because on the back I decided to do this dipped um, neckline and I'm gonna put some ribbon 
here and here so I can tie it to keep it on my shoulders. Um, now I have got a lot of footage of me working on this and um, I recorded every single step so from the moment I started the square putting it all together um, and every time I needed to frog it this got frogged a lot I originally made it a lot longer and then decided that I did want it cropped after all and so I took it all apart again to crop it um, the sleeves went through a, diff a few variations um, before I decided on adding in this detailing so there's all of that for you to see and I also did vlog in between as well as um, a sort of an update it's going back a couple of months now but I still want you to see it all so that's going to go up um, and then I think that will probably be two vlogs that will be uploaded into two videos I think so we've got that coming um, and then there will be some more sewing videos um, well not videos but more vlogs or podcasts showing you what I've been sewing one of them or is this denim dress which is inside out at the moment um, that's my floral yoke that I added in because I want to just reduce the size of it a little bit and then that will be finished and I'll be able to show you that um, and then I've got a couple of crochet projects I'm working on one which is secrets I can't share it at the moment and then um, a few new ones that I do want to show you so now that I've done this big bumper episode which is going to have all of the footage in and pictures of where I've been, what I've been up to um, I can sort of go back to business as usual you'll be seeing Risen and then hopefully we'll get into some sort of routine schedule so you can get regular updates and now I've got, oh sorry I've just kicked you, now I've got my nice snuggly set up here I am definitely thinking a YouTube live is necessary um, so I'm gonna or I'm gonna arrange that date and put it on the screen now so that then I've committed to it and we're gonna do it um, it might end up being mid June or early July I'll check my calendar and I'll let you know <coughs> oh dear I think I've got a cold so I am going to leave it there because this is already over an hour and then I've got footage to add in um, I will be back when I'm back I'm not going to make any promises but I hope it will be soon um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here for subscribing for being a part of this little vlog podcast channel um, Thank you to my Patreons, you are amazing and you get your updates pretty much every week so you know what's going on with my life um, and a lot more in depth than what I put on here as well and I just want to say thank you so much for your support. Um, I've got a Facebook group guys so make sure you go find that and then also I need testers for Pinnacle. I've got two, thank you so much, for the small and the medium, so I just need the larger sizes. I am in the process of getting the pattern written up. I know I've been saying I'm going to do it for a long time. Um, I need to get out of my own way and finish it and then I can get that out there to you all. Um, I think partly I'm not enjoying writing it up and partly I'm just worried that it's not going to be good enough so I'm not doing it. Um, and then, yeah, there's also the pattern for Risen to follow. And then updates on projects that I'm working on. So, lots and lots to share with you. And we're heading into the mid part of the year. I can't believe that. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm going to blow my nose. And it must be near 10 o'clock now. So I need to get ready for bed. I've got work in the morning. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you so, so much for watching. 
Um, make sure you comment below what your favourite item is that I've got from my haul. And I will see you again soon. Thank you, tribe. Guess who's back? Back again. Tell a friend. Cause Heather's back. Back again, back again, back again, back again. Do do do. Jump, jump, jump. Now, down, 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 down. Back again. Okay, let's do this. Do, do, diddly, do it. Are you ready? Cause I am. Alright. Kind of a circulation.